بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Empowered Women My guest for today is Dr. Samir Amoudi She's the Associate Professor and Head of Sheikh Muhammad Hussein Al-Amoudi Scientific Chair of Breast Cancer at King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah She's also a consultant obstetrician gynecologist and a woman with a mighty heart fighting her own battle How are you today? Thank you so much Before we start telling your story, let me ask you if you still remember, how was high school? Well, that was a long time ago, but uh, um, it was one of the nice, uh, let me say, period in life for me, maybe because of the um, changes and uh, the things which happened in the, when I was at that stage. Um, when I remember when I was at the high school, um, my dream was to be a doctor and at that time there was no College of Medicine for, uh, for, uh, for girls in uh, Jeddah area. So I thought, well, that's it. Um, that's the end of the story. And uh, subhanAllah, just a few months before we finished the uh, high school, uh, there was um, a big announcement that they're going to have School of Medicine in Jeddah area. It was a surprise to... Uh, it was on your final year? In, it was in, in the final, in, yes, it was in the final year. And I remember one of my best friends, she was planning to go to Cairo to finish her, uh, to join the uh, School of Medicine. And um, I was thinking, well, uh, that's uh, what we call faith in life. Mm -hmm. So. I have no chance because my family will not allow me to go outside. Mm -hmm. um, to travel on your to own. To travel on my own and uh, to go uh, abroad. But subhanAllah, I joined the School of Medicine while she did not manage to go. And I became a doctor, she did not become a doctor. So sometimes life is full life of takes, surprises. It, and it takes, takes you unexpected turns. That's uh, absolutely right. So how come you wanted to be a doctor? Did you get any career counseling during high school or you were encouraged to choose medicine as your choice or no career counseling was involved? Well, um, there is nothing such, um, uh, a new, it's a new concept to have a counseling, career counsel. This is something, um, new concept that we are hearing a lot of these days, which is a very good uh, thing. But at uh, that time, there was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just personal wish, the family, and uh, my grades uh, were, um, I got high score in the, uh, in the college, in the uh, high school, and it was a personal wish for me. I, I don't know, I felt that, uh, um, I, I felt that it, it goes with my personality more than any other branches that I could join. So, uh, do you believe uh, that um, career counseling should be integrated in the educational system? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you see, a lot of people, they might uh, not be able to uh, have a well-defined um, branch to choose or a college to choose and join. So I think it helps the uh, students a lot. And sometimes they don't know what what's available. And um, like uh, there are a lot of specialities, a lot of uh, colleges, and nobody knows about it because they don't have an, an idea. Counseling helps them to find themselves in the right path. Definitely, definitely. I think I agree. It should be integrated oh, into yes. the uh, educational system. So now um, tell me your story. You had a great career going for you. You're a consultant obstetrician gynecologist and uh, a lot of dreams and aspirations on the way and then something happened in the April of 2006. What was that? Well, um, it was something that uh, took my life in a different, uh, took my life in a different path. Uh, it was Friday, I remember that day exactly. I went for uh, um, uh, lunch with my children outside. Then when I came back, I was taking off my abaya and by just by chance, my hand hit my uh, chest and I felt something there. I felt a lump in my breast. So I don't know if this is, um, if I could say that uh, a good luck or bad luck, being a doctor, um, I started to examine myself like a doctor. So I started to feel the lump, what is it, where is it? 
Um, is it fixed? Is it mobile? Exactly. Is it all the signs. I was. Yeah, I've started to look for all the signs that could tell me whether it's something benign or something I more. I need to worry this. about. Oh yes. So once I felt the lump, then I felt the lymph node uh, under the arm. Uh, within seconds, I recognized that most probably, um, almost 99%. This is going to be cancer, or this is cancer. So, just within a second, I recognized that it's happening to me now. At home? At home, I was at home. Did you consult another friend, colleague? Um, well, for, to be, before, your... before I do anything, the first thing, and this was, I don't know, a reaction that uh, uh, I cannot explain it until now. Two things happened at that uh, second. I remember that I started to go around and walk in my room, and uh, I was just praying to God uh, to give me the strength and be with me because I know what's coming on. Mm. The second thing, I went to my children and I started to talk to them about it. Immediately on the Immediately. first Immediately. The first thing which was scary, it, it was scary, but uh, the, the first thing which came to my mind is my children. What's going to happen to them? So I went to uh, them and I started to talk to them. I told them a story that uh, I told them I received, I just received a call from one of my friends in the United States. And she felt a lump and she's diagnosed to have cancer. So um, I told them she's worried about her children. She doesn't know what to do with them. So what do you think? Abdullah at that time, he was around um, 12, 13 years old. Isra was nine years old. Abdullah asked me, is this a serious disease? You see, children, they have never heard of such a thing. I said, uh, yes. He said, uh, does, does, does this mean that their mother is going to die? I said, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, okay, you always say that we have to be direct, honest, we have to discuss things, so she should discuss it with them. Isra, you know, the girls, they are a bit sensitive emotional. and more emotional, exactly. Mm -hmm. So she said, uh, is she going to be in pain? I said, of course, there are, uh, there is pain in this. She said, no, they should know so that they could be with her when she have pain, they could, uh, be around her. So this is the, the, the first thing which happened. After that, of course, I took my steps and started to consult uh, friends uh, and ask them. Did you get them. a proper diagnosis? Of oh, yeah. Next day. Them? Next day, immediately. immediately. Um, How long I, did it take you to confirm your diagnosis? Things were very fast. Next day, uh, Saturday, I had my mammogram. The mammogram showed that mm. there is a tumor. And uh, they, after they started the investigation, the third day, I started the, the um, isotope and the, the other, uh, all the kinds of investigation. And by the end of the week, I had the biopsy, which confirmed the diagnosis. And um, the day I received the diagnosis, the biopsy, which confirmed that it's malignancy, um, it was 12th of April. It was my birthday day. Oh my God. On that day, <laughs> yes. So on your birthday, you're an obstetrician, birthday, gynecologist, you <laughs> and, and uh, the coincidences are just too amazing to, to ignore. So um, you're still on treatment. I am, but uh, I finished the basic treatment already. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking the uh, Fimara, which is tablets. Mm -hmm. People the, for the cancer, we take it for five years. Mm -hmm. I'm already, this is my third year on that medication. Okay, so uh, uh, you're still on treatment and uh, you hope uh, to, to carry on to five years on that pill. You're, you're done with the basic treatment, and what was the basic treatment? Okay, um, it, it varies from one patient to the other, but for, uh, for me, because the tumor was a little big, uh, so it was an advanced stage and big size, so they had to start with the chemotherapy. Uh, what stage are you in? Okay, uh, I'm late second stage, and I had chemotherapy for around six months. Mm -hmm. Then I had the surgery, which is lumpectomy, and this is just, they remove the tumor and leave the breast. After that, I had um, 25 um, uh, episodes of uh, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, Did it, radiotherapy? I, I would say it in, in medical terms, 
Did your tumor metastasize? No. It no. did not. Uh, yani, uh, alhamdulillah, it was not. Uh, so uh, it was localized and... Uh, it did not spread but anywhere. But the, the pathology, it came um, telling um, that it was HER2 positive. For medically, it means that 20% only of the breast cancer patient, they tend to have this kind of breast cancer uh, tumor or malignancy. And uh, it's one of the uh, more aggressive kind, medically mm -hmm. medical-wise. And the um, survival is short or less than the others. The recurrence rate is uh, higher. But thanks God, uh, we are, I think we are fortunate now because there are a lot of advancement in the t medications and the treatment. I had a treatment which is uh, one of the relatively new medication called Herceptin for a whole one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the best drugs to um, avoid recurrence for the such kind of tumor. And to keep it under control. Yes. Well, we wish you the best of luck. We'll talk some more about uh, why did you choose to share your story. You're very well known for sharing your story. You're the first Saudi woman to share her story with breast cancer. We'll talk some more about that but right after this short break. Welcome back to Empowered Women. I'm sitting down with Dr. Samir Al Amoudi. So um, you are the first Saudi woman to choose to share her story uh, of the disease. Why did you choose to do so? Why did you choose to tell people that you had breast cancer? Well, um, I don't know. I got a feeling that uh, my disease or my illness, it's meant to be for a good reason. I got this feeling from the it's start. It's a calling. It, it is, in a way, and uh, being a doctor, being a mother, being a woman, and uh, I feel that uh, it's a responsibility. I'm responsible for uh, telling other people so that not uh, to have the same problem that I had, to avoid, uh, because the, the most important thing is the early detection in these cases. And we are trying to teach other women to have to the early detection screening. and to have the regular screening, to have the regular mammogram. So it's a message that we deliver to all the patients. So I felt that I have to talk to people, especially when you feel that, like in Saudi Arabia and most of the Arab countries, mm -hmm. they don't talk about cancer. They Sometimes they don't even uh, call it cancer. They call it that disease, the bad disease. My mother, and I'm sure... That's I lack mean, of awareness. Exactly. Lack of awareness. They don't even to mention the name. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, I always say, like in Harry Potter, when they, mm -hmm. when they say the devil, that uh, one, yeah. that, you know that one. So they don't... <laughs> that one cannot be named. Exactly. <laughs> they, don't, they don't call it cancer. They say the bad disease. So I feel that uh, there is a lot of misconception, a lot of silence, that we have to break that silence. You are the author of 13 books, and your publications include Break the Silence, second edition in English, My Journey with Breast Cancer in Arabic, and Breast Cancer Survivors in Saudi Arabia in English. Brief us on them. Well, um, the Break the Silence, uh, I have it in Arabic and I have it in English as well. Uh, it's actually the articles that I wrote uh, in Al Medina newspaper. I have regular column, even before mm -hmm. uh, the breast cancer story, and I used to write weekly. I, I like uh, writing, um, and I've been uh, uh, having this column for more than 20 years. You are a talented doctor. <laughs> You could say in, in a way, but I like the, the writing. Mm -hmm. So when um, I got the breast cancer, I feel that uh, uh, it's uh, something which is going to be good for others to share my story with them. So I started to write uh, my story uh, in the newspaper, in the Medina, uh, in my column. And after that, uh, I collected that one, and it was collected in a book, which is the Arabic Break the Silence. The survivors, it was about the launch of the breast cancer uh, partnership between the United States and Saudi Arabia. And uh, this was uh, the launch uh, uh, which was uh, under the partnership of uh, uh, King Abdullah from, uh, bin Abdul Aziz and uh, the, uh, uh, her, uh, royal, um, her Highness Princess Hissa, mm -hmm. his wife. And from the United States part, it was the, the uh, 
Laura Bush, the former ex uh, lady. Uh, and uh, it was uh, the launch was in Riyadh. But the uh, former first lady, Laura Bush, she wanted to uh, have a meeting with survivors, Saudi women. And uh, we arranged for a meeting with some of the ladies who agreed to talk. Mm -hmm. to talk to her and to talk in public about their story. And uh, that was the breast cancer survivors. It was about documentation. Was it difficult to find ladies It was to extremely talk difficult. Oh yes, it was Doesn't extremely... this surprise you that they um, should be more outgoing, they should be speak, they should be telling more people about it? You see, the things um, are moving now uh, in, in, in a better direction. Um, people started to talk um, as if they were just waiting for somebody to say that well, it's not a stigma. It's mm -hmm. not something that we should feel ashamed of. It's a disease okay. like any other disease. Mm -hmm. But you see, there's a lot of reason why people do not like to talk. Some of them, they don't uh, like to talk because they, uh, they don't have, they are not empowered with information. They don't know much about the disease. They think that they are going to die once they have breast cancer. Others and other women, and there is a group of women who think that if people know that they have breast cancer, they might not propose to their daughters. So okay. it, it's a cultural a misconception. Cultural misconception, exactly. So um, I heard something amazing. Your children, Isra, 12 years old, and Abdullah, 16 years old, may God keep them, uh, they wrote two books. And how did that happen, and what are they called, the books? Are they published, proper books? Oh, yeah. Um, they are published, and uh, it's uh, one of the tools that we are using for uh, educating children mm -hmm. and young generation. Well, it happened um, one day, Isra told me, I would like to show you something on my laptop. And I was surprised. I was really surprised when I saw that um, she make the uh, story, she uh, wrote the story, the design, everything. Wow. So all I, on her own. I felt, yes, on her own. And uh, it touched me very, very deeply in my heart because I felt how uh, children get involved emotionally with our problems. Sometimes we underestimate the, the amount of uh, feeling they, they have. They can think about it almost every oh, day, yes. every night. Yes, yes. Just One of the things which was as well, um, surprising and uh, I did not expect it from Isra and I wrote this and it's in her book as well she asked me now you have breast cancer does this mean that when I grow up I will have cancer like you it was a um, um, sudden question I had to be very honest with her and I could not believe that a nine or ten years old lady, a uh, uh, girl at that time, she thinks in this way, and she but has I have to say she is a young lady. She she's is not a. She, <laughs> she's she is not a, now, she's a young yeah. lady. <laughs> so at that time, I said, okay, listen, Isra, yes, mm. any female could have breast cancer, but it's not necessarily that you have breast cancer. Mm. The other thing I told her, um, well, nowadays when we talk like about certain diseases, we say. In the past, people used to die from tuberculosis, from uh, uh, the flu. whatever. It killed 50 million exactly, people in 1980. Exactly. <laughs> so hopefully what we are doing now, uh, we what we are doing is in uh, trying to reach a day when you and your friends will come and sit together and say, well, in the past, there was a disease used to kill women. It's called breast cancer. So. This was the, the uh, story of her book. Then Abdullah, uh, I told him, listen, Isra now is doing this book. Why don't you do a book as well so that we could approach young boys in your age? Mm -hmm. uh, and then he started to, to write that one. Him being a boy, it's really confusing for males since they cannot identify with the female exactly. physiology. So uh, it, it's a lot of confusion. It's their mother, it's their sister, it's their wife, it's their daughter. This is so, the message, hmm. because they believe that it's a disease of women, so don't, they don't talk about it. And um, it, it's a disease, uh, breast cancer, I always keep saying that it's a disease of the family. It affects every member of the family. Uh, it affects the husband, the father, the son, everybody is affected. The other thing which makes me very keen to have these books distributed everywhere, and they are distributed free, I believe that sometimes you might 
uh, not be able to change adults. You will find a lot of resistance. So let's work on the new generation. It's much easier to educate this uh, future generation because the, the girls like Isra and her friends, they are the future mom and they are the future, the woman in the future who, if they grow on certain correct beliefs in health, this will empower them with knowledge and we will have a generation who doesn't have the phobia of cancer like what There'll we have be more pro awareness exactly. pro breast cancer yes uh, yes we will break fighting. the phobia we'll break the silence the, and it, it's happening now and I, I noticed that like isra and her friends they uh, have the pink ribbon on their abaya uh, they when they draw or they write uh, sometimes they uh, have a cause they have a cause and okay. they understand what's the big ribbon. Sometimes you have adults and even medical people who doesn't know what does it mean to have that the big ribbon. We will talk some more about your participation in media and awareness uh, on the topic of breast cancer, but right after this short break, stay with us. Welcome back to Empowered Women. You've participated in multiple programs such as the CNN and uh, ABC's Good Morning America, 15 television episodes, and a weekly column in the Medina newspaper. Uh, you've written 31 articles up till now. You've compiled them in a book. What are you aiming at? To break the silence. The first thing which I felt that is a must, uh, because when I got the breast cancer, uh, I remember when I um, told my family about the diagnosis, the first thing, um, most of them, they told me, okay, now let us keep it uh, just uh, between us, no need that uh, other people know about it. So I felt that uh, there is- This is the stereotype. The, the stereotype which happens everywhere in every, with every family. So I felt that, no, I have to go and speak and, uh, educate others about it because, and I told my family, I told them the cancer by itself is a stress. Mm -hmm. So I don't need another stress of having this stress of that. Uh, compiling it and yes, keeping it inside. Keeping it and uh, I start to worry about uh, people mm -hmm. uh, they know or they don't know. I don't think this is right. The other thing, unless we talk about it, we are not going to uh, find the way to support other people. You see, the people, the uh, empowering women and families with knowledge is the only way uh, to support them in the fight against breast cancer. So this is why I thought I should go in public and media is the best tool. Uh, 